Lesson 3.1b, Writing Rational Numbers as Decimals Using Long Division. So if you remember from the previous video, 3.1a, a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio, a fraction, of two integers, a and b, where b is not zero, otherwise it's undefined. So the numerator is a, the denominator is b, we have a divided by b. We have 5 tenths, that's equal to 1 half. It could be written as a ratio, a fraction, so that's a rational number. We can write the whole number 17 as a 17 over 1. Here we have 1 third as 0.3. It's got a bar over the top, so it's showing us that the 3 repeats. We have 3 and a half, which is 35 tenths, or 7 halves. Here we have 2 and 25 hundredths. We can write that as 225 hundredths. We can write it in its simplest form as 9 halves. These are all rational numbers. We can convert a rational number to a decimal using long division. We divide the numerator by the denominator. We divide the numerator by the denominator. We have 1 fourth, which is equal to 1 divided by 4. We write our 1 on the inside of the division symbol. Our 4 is on the outside. That's the divisor. 4 cannot fit into 1, so we put a 0 above it. And we add a decimal point and zeros to the right of the decimal point to keep dividing. 4 fits into 10 two times, so we have our decimal point above this one. We write a 2 here. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract it. We get 10 minus 8 is a 2. We drop down this 0. 4 fits into 20 five times, and 4 times 5 is 20. We have a 0 remainder, and this decimal ends at the hundredths place. And some decimals are terminating decimals because the decimals come to an end. There's a distinct place value that that decimal comes to an end at the hundredths place. We know 1 fourth is equal to 25 hundredths. Some decimals are repeating decimals because one or more digits repeat infinitely. That means forever. We have 1 third. That means 1 divided by 3. So we have 1 as our dividend and 3 as our divisor. We ask ourselves, can 3 fit into 1? Nope. So we're going to put a 0 above here. We're going to write a decimal point and we're going to start writing zeros to the right of the decimal point to keep dividing. 3 can fit into 10 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. We do 10 minus 9, which is a 1. We drop down another 0. We have another 10. 3 fits into 10 three times. That's a 9. We subtract, get a 1. We drop down another 0. Look what's happening. We keep getting a 10, and we keep putting 3 up here in our quotient, and we keep getting a 1 and dropping down as it's repeating. So we know that 1 divided by 3 is going to be a 0 0.3 with this 3 repeating. We write a bar over the digits that repeat. So there's a bar over that one digit that is repeating that 3. We can continue to write more zeros to the right of the decimal point. We add zeros until our remainder is 0 or the digits repeat. So Actually, we didn't need to do this fourth one. We could have seen that it was doing 3, 3, 3. We could have stopped them. Here we have 2 sevenths. That means 2 divided by 7. The numerator is going to be the dividend. The denominator is going to be the divisor. So our 7 is on the outside. 7 cannot fit into 2, so we add a decimal point here and straight above into the quotient. We add a 0. 7 can fit into 20 two times. 7 times 2 is 14. We subtract, we get a 6, and we drop down another 0. 7 can fit into 60 eight times. 7 times 8 is 56. We subtract that, get a 4, drop down another 0, and 7 can fit into 40 five times. 7 times 5 is 35. We subtract that, get a 5. We drop down another 0 because we haven't gotten a zero remainder yet. Seven fits into 50 seven times, because seven times seven is 49. 50 minus 49 is a one. 
We drop down another zero. Seven fits into 10, one time. We write a one up there. Seven times one is seven, we subtract, we get a three. And we drop down another zero and we have 30. Seven fits into 30, four times. That's seven times four is 28, we subtract that. We get a two, we drop down another zero and we're gonna start repeating. We've got a two eight again. We've got a 20 and then a 60 again, just like we did up here. That means the digits in the quotient are starting to repeat. We have six repeating digits, two, eight, five, seven, one, four. We write a bar over all of them because they're six digits repeating. When we're sure the digits are repeating, we stop dividing and write a bar above the repeating digits. We can use common fraction and decimal equivalents along with multiplication to convert fractions to decimals. If we need to convert three-fourths to a decimal, we think, well, that's one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. Or we could even say it's three times one-fourth. And if we know that one-fourth is 25 hundredths, well, we just multiply three times 25 hundredths. We get 75 hundredths. We know three-fourths as a decimal is 75 hundredths. We can convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. Remember, improper fractions are fractions that are greater than one. If we have three and a half, we can convert it to an improper fraction. I don't know if you remember from fourth, fifth, sixth grade, we do the whole number multiplied to the denominator, three times two is six, then we add the numerator, so we have seven, and we write that over the original denominator, so we have seven halves. Do you remember how to do that? So now we have seven halves, and we do seven divided by two. The two is on the outside of the bracket. Two can fit into seven three times, and two times three is six. We subtract it, get a one. We're going for a zero remainder, so we need to put a zero on the right side of the decimal point here, and we have a decimal going, point going straight up. Now, two fits into 10. Well, two times five is 10, we subtract that, and we do have a zero remainder. We know that three and a half is equivalent to three and five tenths. Now, we don't need to convert it to an improper fraction. We can set aside the whole number to just convert the fraction part. If we have three and a half, we know the three whole number is three and zero tenths. It can be written as a decimal like this. We can just convert the fraction part and do one divided by two and get five tenths. Then we add the 3.0 plus the 0 0.5 and we get three and five tenths. So using common sense, we can just divide the fraction part, then add it to the whole number. Sometimes only one or a few digits of the quotient will repeat. It doesn't have to be the entire quotient repeating. Sometimes it's just one or a few of the digits. For 11 24ths, we do 11 divided by 24. 24 is our divisor. And we think, well, 24 can't fit into 11, so we need to add a decimal point and some zeros to keep dividing. So now we look at this as 110 divided by 24. 24 can fit into a 110 four times, and four times 24 is 96. Now we do 110 minus 96. That's gonna give us a 14. And 24 can't fit into 14, so we're gonna drop down another zero. 24 fits into 140 five times, and five times 24 is 120. We subtract that, we get a two, a zero, and now we drop down another zero. 24 fits into 200 eight times, and eight times 24 is 192. We subtract and get an eight. We drop down another zero. 24 fits into 80 three times, and three times 24 is 72. We subtract that. Look, now we got another eight. If we drop down another zero, it's going to be 24 fitting into 83 times again, which is going to be 
24 times 3 is 72. Subtract, get an 8 again. So do you see what's happening? We have a 110, a 140, a 200, and then an 80, 80, 80. And if we keep adding zeros, we're going to keep getting an 80. So 11 24ths is going to only have that 3 repeating. There's only one digit repeating. So we write 0 0.4583 with a little bar over the 3 to show that only the 3 is repeating. We can use long division to show two fractions are equivalent. We have 1 fourth and 2 eighths. We do 1 divided by 4 and 2 divided by 8. We're going to get the same decimal. 25 hundredths is equal to 25 hundredths. We know that these are equivalent fractions because they have the same decimal equivalents as each other. We can find the decimal equivalent of negative rational numbers. Here we have a negative one-fifth. So, number one, this is a negative fraction, so its decimal equivalent will be negative. So negative one-fifth is going to equal some negative decimal. We divide their absolute values. One divided by five. Five can't fit into one. We put a zero. We add a decimal in the quotient and next to the one. And we think five can fit into ten two times. And five times two is ten. We get a zero remainder. We know that it's a terminating decimal. And it's going to be negative, isn't it? So negative one-fifth is equal to negative two-tenths. A fraction doesn't need to be in its simplest form to be converted to a decimal. Five-tenths is equal to one-half. If we do five divided by ten, we're going to get 0 0.5. And if we do one divided by two, we're going to get 0 0.5. They're equivalent fractions. We're going to get an equivalent decimal regardless of if it's in its simplest form or not. So whether it's in its simplest form or not, we will get the same decimal. We're finished with 3.1b. We're going to move on to 3.1c, writing mixed numbers as decimals. We did that a little bit in this lesson, but let's try some more. Just remember, we can keep dividing until we get a zero remainder by adding more and more zeros to the right side of a decimal point. Have a wonderful day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.